Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the trailer for Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken. Let's dive in. This trailer was one of the trailers I featured in the trending trailer music for this month in my last week's video. So I want to dive into this a little bit further because I think this is such a great example of awe-inspiring family adventure trailer music that kind of takes all of the hugeness of epic hybrid that you'd get in a more adult orientated Marvel film and the softness and openness and emotion of a kid's movie. And it comes together in this fantastic cue. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to sections of this, talk about it as we go. Um, you can obviously watch the full trailer as well in last week's video. So let's take a look. The ocean is a mysterious world. Okay, right, that, so I'm going to keep doing this, that is what an opener needs to do. It doesn't need to do all this got huge fancy stuff. We don't need a ton of things going on. We just need an introductory drone, a little pad that implies the sense of space, that kind of gives you the sense of a new world. Humans know more about the surface of Mars than the floor of the ocean. And the sea creatures who live there, well, even the ones you have imagined, you've imagined them wrong. Take the mighty giant kraken, bloodthirsty monster. Up to this point, we're hearing a piano idea. Dun, dun, dun. Repeated. There isn't much growth going on. There is a very, very subtle level of growth in the pads in the background. It gets a little bit denser and starts to grow a little bit. But the piano melody is doing everything it needs to do. It's this nostalgia and sweetness. It's a very uncomplicated melody. And that kind of carries through with what the Grandma Kraken is talking about. Monster sinker of ships. Where are you even getting this? Krakens are majestic creatures and noble protectors. I'm just Ruby Gilman. Okay, and we build up into this little stop down. It's a mini stop down. With a growth in the pads, the piano starts to dip in volume and we get this fantastic white noise riser that actually uh, is so useful. In this instance, to get a trailer riser that doesn't have like the pretense of horror or anything else, use a white noise riser, which you can use if you use the, uh, it's called the riser, by the way, I've, uh, air technology, I forget who, who made it, but uh, that would be perfect to create this type of thing. And what it's doing is we're setting up for our character, our character story. We're now being introduced to her. Now, what's going to go wrong? Normal teenager. For generations, Krakens have protected the seas, keeping us safe from the most power-hungry and dangerous creature of all. The mermaid? Yes! Okay. That section there, this introduction of Act 2, I love, I love this really fast string up arpeggio. Digga, 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 digga. Just kind of playing a section of a scale rather than an arpeggio really drives this trailer forward and it introduces us into act two when we're kind of being brought into the world when the challenges that our character is going to be challenging which is the mermaid the mermaid oh. but people love mermaids i love you so much love you too rando of course they do people are and that other stop down just here which is that same string pan up an octave with this like huge downer and more white noise risers, really ramping it up to this next section. You I'm Chelsea. Mermaids are selfish, <laughs> vain narcissists. I am gorgeous. Yes, queen. The worst of them all. What's happening? Uh, what? me. Hey, are you okay? Another white, no white noise riser bringing us into this stop. But before this, we had the introduction of drums into what we had already with the pads and the strings. It doesn't need to be massive. It's like, just keeping it basic and simple. Nothing's hammering it at full velocity. It's all quite like mellow, but implying a sense of drive and pushing forward. Now, this is obviously where we're about to uh, 
have our stop down into Act 3, uh, where we're introduced to the problem, and then it's the the climax of that and, and, and how the characters overcome it. I know your secret. You're a kraken hiding as a human. You really gotta go oh, now. And soon, everyone will know the truth. Cushies. <laughs> Are you ready for your destiny? I just want to live my life. Ah! You have powers beyond your imagination. This is your moment, Ruby. Okay, did you hear how simple the big trailer hits were? Dung. Dung, dung. That's all. But then with the brass, probably shoved through OTT or sort of giving this lovely crisp sound to it, all of a sudden it just completely lifts into Act 3. You get this sense of scale and weight and impact and urgency and you feel and you relate to Ruby's struggle. Grandmama, yes. I want you to teach me how to use my powers. Camouflage, super speed, body armor. Let's see what you're capable of. Okay, so Act Three here. So when you, this is kind of like the second half of Act Three, we say, how do I ma make this sound even bigger? How do I go that next step? I've already got my massive trailer hits and my brass and my strings. What do I do? You chuck in a choir, a choir as a layer to give it this sense of the epic. I have laser eyes? Yes, they do pack a wallop. Whoa. You're just a dumb teenager. <laughs> I'm a flippin' mermaid! Okay, I'm gonna stop it there. Because up to this point, in this last section of Act 3, You've done this other thing where you go, okay, well, I've done everything now. I've got my big hits, I've got my brass, I've got my strings, I've got my risers, I've got my choir. What else do I do to make Act 3 feel like it's progressing? You bring in a variation of the harmony or the melody. So then you still feel the scale and the weight and the hugeness of everything else, but the change makes us go, oh, something's happening. Oh, there's something we need to pay attention to. Now, what we're just doing now is they've climbed the melody up to the top and they're going to bring us into what I like to call the hold, which is where they hold the last notes for longer than you would think because it's, it's the culmination of the whole story and you're not sure if it's going to go right. Knock, knock. No matter what the challenge, a kraken will always answer the call. It's time to go big. So there you have it, the Ruby Gilman trailer. Now, I absolutely love this genre of music, this, this chance to, be, to marry the kind of huge epicness of trailer and also the kind of sweet, uplifting nostalgia that you would often find in like a Google ad, you know, uh, which is where I came from before I started doing trailer music. Not from a Google ad. I wasn't in a Google advert. You know what I mean. I did the music for it. Uh, and I love this, that you can take simple almost childlike melodies, and then you just bring them together with this epic instrumentation, and you have this. I just think it's absolutely fantastic. So the thing, the thing to take away from this trailer, for me, is the use of white noise risers um, in the stop downs. And the stop downs can afford to be long, but what they've done cleverly in this is they've made the stop downs continue with the digga 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 and the, the white noise risers and the rolls bring this in. The other aspect is the three steps of Act 3. You've got, obviously, the introduction of the huge trailer hits, which are used sparingly. Then you've got the introduction of the choir. Then you've got an introduction of a change in harmony. And that means that we can extend our Act 3 to be almost half of the queue. It's really, really clever, really, really simple.